Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is go over um, some transformations with actually some functions. So in my previous video, I just kind of went over what transformations you know kind of look like with a general, uh, generic f of x. Well now, I'm going to say, remember f of x still represents our parent function, but now I'm going to give you some examples of some different parent functions. And this is just like the tip of the iceberg, but here's some examples of what I'm going to use x, x squared, x cubed, x fourth. You could keep on going up with higher powers. Square root of x, square um, cube root of x, you could keep on going up with higher indexes. 1 over x, ln of x, log of x, cosine of x, sine of x, and then absolute value of x is way in the end, so I hope you can see it. So basically, if you remember in our last video, basically depending on where the values were, inside um, of our function, that's going to determine what type of trans, um, transformation we have. We could have a horizontal transformation. We could have a um, vertical transformation. We could have a reflection of the x-axis, reflection of the y-axis, as well as having some compressions, either vertical and horizontal. Um, so basically, remember, vertical transformations are going to be if we're adding or subtracting um, a value outside of the function. Horizontal transformations are going to come when we're adding or subtracting value inside of a function. If we're multiplying the function outside, that's going to be a reflection of the x-axis. Multiplying a function inside um, by negative 1, I'm sorry. If you're multiplying a function by negative 1 outside, then it's a reflection of the x-axis. If you're multiplying by negative 1 on the inside, that's going to be a reflection about the y-axis. And then if you're multiplying by a value um, which the absolute value is greater than 1, then that's going to be a vertical um, stretch or a horizontal compression. And if you're multiplying by that where the absolute value of that um, uh, multiplier is less than 1, then that's going to be a horizontal stretch or a vertical compression. So let's go and get into the right one. Um, so the first couple I'm going to kind of break down very closely, and then I'll kind of speed it up as I go through. But the first kind of row I'm going to kind of go through a little bit slowly. So as you guys can see here, I have f of x equals x squared plus 2. And basically, I want you to understand, or x cubed, I'm sorry, plus 2. What I want you guys to understand is the function, the parent function, is still x cubed, right? And that's what sometimes I was using the verb pure. That's still, x cubed is still written right there. So by adding 2, I'm adding 2 to the outside, right? You could think of this, you could say x cubed is my parent function. So it's really f of x plus 2. So since I'm adding the 2 outside of the function, it's not changing what the parent function looks like at all. Since I'm adding to the outside, then what we can say is that's going to be a vertical transformation. Since I'm adding, that vertical transformation is going to be up. So I'm going to write up 2 units. In this next example, I'm now using x squared. But you can see that my function x squared is not really, it doesn't really look like x squared, right? It's now x minus 2. So you can see I'm subtracting 2 inside of the function, right? Now, the other thing to remember is when we're taking that value, if it's x minus c, whenever it's like your function, f of x, and now it's x minus c, remember c is positive. It's x minus c. So, or whatever the value of c is, that's where you're going to be translating. So in this case, I can say that c is 2 because it's x minus 2. Right where c is equal to 2. So that's going to tell me 2 units right. Since 2 is positive, I'm going 2 units to the right, because that's the general formula of our transformation per my previous video. A lot of times, students always kind of get this confused. So if you're, it's not making sense, I always just say, just remember vertical translation. If it's positive, goes up. Negative, goes down. When it's inside, it's just kind of the opposite. Now you can see I have my function, which is exactly the same, absolute value of x. But now my absolute value function is being multiplied by a negative. So when you have a function being multiplied by a negative outside the function, it's still my fun you still see my function there. But since it's being multiplied outside the function, that's going to be a reflection of the x-axis. So I'll just say reflect x over the x-axis. Now you can see this function, I have cosine of negative x. Well, my parent, my parent function is cosine of x. So you can see that I'm multiplying by a negative not outside. It's not negative cosine of x. It's cosine of negative 1 times x. So the negative is being multiplied on the inside. So that's going to tell me to reflect over the y-axis. Isaiah Jenkins, could you please report to the main office? Your father the y-axis. Sorry. Still office. at school. Um, in this example, you can see that now I have f of x is equal to 2 times the absolute value of x. So I still have square root of x. But now it's being multiplied by a multiplier. And the absolute value of that number, 2, is greater than 1. So therefore, I'm just going to call this a vertical stretch. Megan okay. Price, Sorry about that. that so that's going to be a vertical stretch, or you can think of that as a horizontal compression. 
All right, so now in the next row, I basically have two operations going on. Um, rather than the first one, I just was doing one. Now I have two things going on. So in, this next, in the next set, I have x plus 1. The 1 is being added on the inside. Now, a lot of times this gets confused because students say, all right, x minus 2, the c was equal to 2. Well, in this case, I can write this as x minus a negative 1 raised to the fourth minus 5. So therefore, you can see in this case that c is equal to negative 1. So that's going to tell me I'm now going to be shifting my graph to the left. So whenever it's positive, it's going to the left when you're adding inside the function. So therefore, my transformations are going to be left one unit. I am now, and then I'm subtracting a 5, but that's outside of the function. So it will be down five units. To the next one here, you can see now I'm multiplying by a number. Um, I'm mul also multiplying by a number that's negative. So it's, uh, since I'm multiplying by a negative on the outside of my function, because it's sine of x, is still true, is still pure. Since I'm multiplying a negative, I know it's going to be reflect over the x-axis. Then the absolute value of that number that I'm solving is 1 half. Well, that's less than 1. So instead of being a vertical stretch, that's going to be a vertical compression. Or you could say horizontal stretch. Um, in this example here, very similar like this one, but it's just kind of switched around. Again, that's negative, so now it's log. So you can see I'm subtracting the 3 inside, but I'm adding the 2 on the outside. So therefore, that's going to be right 3 units and then down 2 units. Okay, And then the last one here, um, I have the square root of 2x plus 1. So I'm multiplying by 2 inside the function, adding 1 outside the function. Um, it doesn't matter if you multiply the 2 on the inside or the outside, but you guys can see the difference of multiplying outside to inside. Um, that's still going to be a vertical stretch. It's going to be a little bit different um, as far as you, in your values, but it's still going to provide a vertical stretch. So that will be a vertical stretch. And since I'm adding 1 outside, it's going to be um, shift it up 1 unit. OK, into this next example here, now you can see my function is 1 over x. Well, 1 over x, you can see that I have a 2 up top. So how would I get a 2 up top? Well, if I multiplied 1 over x times 2, that would basically, if I multiplied 2 times 1 over x, that would equal 2 over x. So you can see that 2 is basically what, the, what it's been multiplied by. So therefore, that's going to be another vertical um, stretch. Then I have x plus 3 and then minus 1. Well, the, since the plus 3 is in the denominator, that can tell you I'm adding that 3 inside the function. And then the minus 1 is not a part of the fraction, so that's going to be outside of the function. Because you can see 1 over x is a fraction, right? It's a rational function. So since I'm subtracting the 1 outside the fraction, that's going to be outside. So x plus 3 is going to tell me to go left 3 and then down 1, and that's units. Down one unit. Left three units. OK. So now in this next example, you can see now I'm multiplying. The, so I have here is the natural log, ln. So I'm multiplying it by 2. I'm multiplying it by a negative on the inside. And I'm adding a 6 to the outside. So it's going to be another vertical stretch. Since I'm multiplying the negative on the inside of the function, right? it's being multiplied by x, not on the outside. So since it's on the inside, that's going to be reflect the y-axis. And then I'm adding 6 on the outside, so you'd say up 6 units. Excuse me. On this next one, um, you can see now I am, again, multiplying by a 1 fourth. Since the absolute value of 1 fourth is less, is less than 1, that's going to be a um, vertical compression. I'm subtracting 2. So this one's the absolute value, like this. So the absolute value I'm subtracting 2 inside my absolute value, and then I'm adding a 5 outside. So that's going to be um, right 2 units, and then down. Oops, I'm sorry. That's a positive 5, right? So that's going to be up 5 units. OK. And the last one here is I have a cube root. Um, again, you can see this cube root is being multiplied by a negative on the outside. Inside of that cube root, I'm adding 2, and then I'm subtracting 5. 
So since I'm multiplying by negative, that's going to be another reflect over the x-axis. Hopefully you guys can see the difference here. Multiplying on the outside, multiplying on the inside. Multiplying on the outside, multiplying on the inside. So that's reflect over, um, reflect the x-axis. Then it's going to be left two units and down five units. OK, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you apply transformations to a different set of parent functions. Thanks.